What's up and good morning guys. We just bought this camper behind us and I'm currently hiding behind it to stay out of the wind. It is a Apex Ultralight 256 BHS. When you buy a new camper, they come with a 12 volt battery up on the front usually. And the newer ones like this one comes with a 100 watt solar panel on the roof to basically trickle charge that battery. You can use most things off of the 12 volt battery with the trickle charger up top. The lights, the water pump, the refrigerator in this case will run all of that for a while not indefinitely but a while also the awning in order to get the awning out and the slide in order to move the slide out now those are all the important things which is good so you're not going to have any of the 110 volt amenities like all your outlets the air conditioner your water heater or anything like that so you either need to be plugged in with the cord at in shore power at a campground or use a generator. Now I don't have a generator yet and I got an idea thanks to EcoFlow with one of these little guys. Now this is called the EcoFlow River 2. It's the new river series that they've got. There's actually three different versions of these, this being the smallest one. This offers 300 watts of output and is 256 watt hours. Now let me just start off by saying that this is not a portable battery generator or does not replace something like the Delta series from EcoFlow. I just had an idea and I want to try it here so I thought I would showcase this product and put it on video and try out an idea I had to kind of get by with this little thing instead of using a giant battery or a giant generator. So that being said we are not going to have the air conditioner running Anything that requires anything more than 300 watts, we're not going to have, obviously. We're not going to have a whole lot of runtime because this is only 256 watt hours. But what this is designed for is to take with you camping, to take with you, put it in your truck, put it in your car, and just top, top off whatever you need to. We've got USBs, we've got 110 outlets, we've got DC on the side there as well with a nice digital readout. And I'll go over all that in just a little bit. But for starters, let's plug this thing into my camper notice there's no 30 amp outlet on this obviously because it's only 300 watt output we've got the 30 amp plug going into the surge protector and into a 15 amp adapter now don't freak out first of all this is off still and the breakers inside are all turned off as well now to complement the river to keep it topped up as much as we can we have the ecoflow portable 110 watt solar panels. So let's get that opened up and plug it in to the EcoFlow River 2 and keep this topped up as much as we can. What you saw there is really cool about this thing is the carrying case allows it to sit at the perfect angle. Okay, so we've got the solar panels positioned 90 degrees at the sun. Beautiful no clouds out today so that is going to be charging up this guy at 100 watts or so 110 watts and you can see it's at 100 percent right now so it's not doing anything okay so let's do a quick recap we've got the 30 amp plug plugged into the river 2 and we've got the solar panel charging the river 2 it's at 100 percent right now so we are inside the camper and we are going to turn off all of the breakers so they're all off and flip on the main so this is just the power coming in we're going to leave the air conditioner the water heater off we'll turn on the gf gfi that's just the outlets and we'll turn on the refrigerator slash converter and that is what is basically charging the battery so we can use the river two to essentially charge the battery it's not exactly efficient doing that because you're using an inverter and a converter to bring it up to 110 and then back down to 12 volts but just as a proof of concept, we can use that solar panel, which is free energy, and charge the 12 volt battery up front, which if you didn't have a solar panel on the roof, that would be a good use case. But in this case, we also get all the 110 volt outlets inside the camper. This way you get all the outlets and whatever you plug into the outlet, you're essentially plugging into the river too. So you just have to be mindful that you cannot run anything too powerful like a high use appliance or something like that. But you can charge your phones, your laptop, anything that you would normally do with the outlets in your camper, you can now do as you normally would if you're off grid 
you just have to be mindful of the 300 watt limit. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the AC output on. You can immediately see we got some output. We got 30, 30 some watts. That's probably the converter charging the 12 volt battery. So that should kick on and off and go up and down as needed. Okay, so now in theory, every one of these outlets, there's one there, one on the other side of the bed, one here by the kitchen sink, another one here under the table, two in the bunks back there, you get the idea in the bathroom as well. All of those outlets should be powered. So we got this little vacuum here that runs at about 250 watts or so. Let's go ahead and plug this in just here at the kitchen. And let's turn it on. Okay, so I think you get the idea what I'm going for here, and it does work. Now, I'm just gonna stress this again. It does not replace a bigger battery system like the Delta series or uh, a gas generator or something like that. But it does work, and it will keep your 12 volt system topped off if you do not have a solar panel on the roof already. Or if you just need a little bit more solar, the portable solar panel from EcoFlow here it consistently outputs the 110 volts that it says it does. As you can see here from this clip, I tried it at home and it worked flawlessly, topped it right up. First, I'm just gonna turn a bunch of these super obnoxious and annoyingly loud fans on. There's that one. We got all the lights on in here already. Oh, we're missing these lights. Okay, so we're using between 75 and 80 watts it looks like, and that is only the converter, which is charging the 12 volt battery that is using everything off of the 12 volt system. Now let's go ahead and turn on the vacuum and see what happens then. You can see now we have 13 hours of use if we use it just the way it is, but it's pretty much indefinitely as long as the sun's out because we're putting in just as much as we're taking out. Let's turn these obnoxious fans off. Okay, let's flip on the vacuum and see what happens. Okay, so now we've got the converter working to charge the 12 volt battery as well as the vacuum. And we're just under the limit of the 300 watts. So yeah, we're only getting about 80 watts out of the solar panel, probably because it's about an hour and a half from sunset. So we're not gonna be working at 100% efficiency, but we're going, we're getting 80 watts out of 110 watt solar panel. So not too bad for using it as the uh, replacement for the converter and not running everything in the, every 12 volt item in the camper like I was besides the refrigerator. Um, it'll keep it pretty much uh, topped up at 80 watts. So as you can see at basically full load, 300 watts, it will last for almost an hour, so 52 minutes with the input of the solar panels as it is now, which isn't bad if you ask me. I mean, if you're gonna use all your power, you might as well do it while the sun's out if you got a vacuum, like my case, or whatever you have to do with the power. Now, you may be asking me, this is a lot of work just to be able to plug stuff into outlets. And I would agree with you, but the main benefit of this, rather than just taking the River 2 inside the camper with me and plugging it in and being able to, you know, carry it around with you, like I said, everyone in the camper has their outlets to be useful, but all of this, can stay outside now. The solar panel, that's water resistant. The connectors are not, but, and neither is the river. It's not waterproof or water resistant for that matter. But if you're outside and it's not raining, you can just leave it all outside. You can tuck all of this setup under the camper so it's staying out of the elements for the most part. And if it's raining, you could probably figure out a way to put that in some kind of a box, stick it underneath the camper so water doesn't get to it. Now EcoFlow doesn't recommend that. Obviously they want you to keep it inside. That's kind of what it's designed for. And the solar panels are water resistant, so those will be fine. You just have to watch out for the connectors. Those connectors do have little O-rings on them. So you should be okay, but who knows. If you didn't set it up like this, then you would have to run the solar panel cable like outside the door or through a window or something and plug it into the river which would be inside. So it just seems easier this way, a little bit simpler if you have it all set up and ready to go. But I just stress again, this is not a replacement for a generator. Also the solar panel doesn't come with the River 2, it's an extra product accessory. So if you just wanted to buy the River 2, 
and plug things directly into it without having to deal with any of that setup. Obviously this will work too. Turn the AC on. on. So if you did want to bring this around with you, bring it inside your camper, inside your tent, whatever, if you're camping, keep it in your truck, wherever you need some extra power, maybe out in the woods somewhere, whatever, you can charge this up at home and it will charge this whole thing in one hour at about 350 watts, I believe. And that's pretty impressive because the amount of power this has, 256 watts, to be able to charge it up in one hour is really handy. So for Halloween in our neighborhood, we pull a trailer as a hayride with our golf cart and we used this to power all the lights on the golf cart and the trailer and it did phenomenally we didn't have to stop for it at all and recharge it to go from zero to 100 percent in one hour is extremely handy if you are going to be you know taking it around with you different places and need it to charge real quick say in a hotel room or something like that if you're charging it in your car you can charge it up to 100 watts i believe using the same DC port on the back that the solar panels use. And the cord for that is right here. So you plug this into your car and the other end here into the back. Near the back, the same spot that the solar panels use. Another quick thing I want to mention here is if you do happen to plug something into either the river or if you have it set up like I just did and plug something into the camper that is over 300 watts or the totality of everything is more than 300 watts, then obviously you are going to overload the thing and it will shut itself down. So this guy will be a staple of our kit camping from now on and probably a good thing to keep in the car as well. Also for all you tech guys out there and you need a UPS and this isn't doing anything when it's sitting at home, you can use this as a UPS. Plug your computer or your network system into here and then plug this into the wall it will automatically switch over in milliseconds. I can't remember the exact time. I'll put it on the screen right now. And this will act as a UPS. So if you did want to pick up one of the River 2 products, there are actually three different sizes. Uh, I will put all that in the description box below, this being the smallest one. The solar panels will also be in the description down below. So that's all I have for this one. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Let's take advantage of the last bit of sun we got here. Plug this guy in and get it topped off. The whole time we were testing it today, we only used, uh, what does that say, 86%. We only used 14%, and it will be charged up in 27 minutes at the current 71 input watts from the solar panel. Pretty cool.